explain a bit, lah, but hang on first. Let's answer a question. For progressive wave, state what is meant by wavelength. So wavelength is distance. You see the word length confirm is distance, right? It cannot be mass or time or current. Right? So this is distance. Distance what? Distance between two adjacent points that are in phase. So you imagine you have your wave. Wow, my wave. Okay, imagine you have a wave like this. And these two points is lambda. Because these two points is in, in phase. So here is an opportunity for me to comment a bit about phase difference or phase angle. Okay, so if you go to our website on Blogspot, you can find the link somewhere on the YouTube channel. Okay, there's a list of simulation that you can go through. Because sometimes you need visuals, right? So if let's say I want to look at phase difference between two points, I can click on this. The link here, much I'm a bit not there, but I can find this. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So you see, yeah. If I want one lambda, my particle B have to be here. Correct? This is one lambda. Normally, you will know that shape, the repeated pattern is one lambda. Okay? So if it's one lambda, and if I, okay, adjust this, the phase difference is exactly 360. So this is what in phase means. You see, they move together. All the time, they are BFF. When you're up, your best friend is also up. When you are down, your best friend also feels sorry for you, also down. So this is called in phase. And in phase means your phase difference is 360. Or it can also be zero. But the distance between these two particles is always lambda. Okay, let me pause a bit. Teacher, here and here is also in phase, right? Yeah, well. They also move up and move down. But is this lambda? No, because they are not adjacent. So when we talk about wave, we care about the wave relationship because it tells us a lot of information about the particles. This is in phase. Previous one, not in phase. I'm oh, sorry, previous one was lambda. This is not lambda. Okay. So since we're talking about phase difference, you see when I drag this one, I drag this one, you can see the phase difference changing. And of course, the first place, first and foremost place where they will be perfectly in phase is when the phase angle is zero. Okay? And then if let's say I'm talking about some arbitrary position like 60 degree, then this is the phase difference. You can always use ratio to find what is the distance or the angle. We will do a question later. But this is not in phase. Okay? Yeah? So in phase, it's all about movement of particles. If you want to stare at it a bit, you can... Go to our website. All the things are linked. Okay. So right now, that's why the term adjacent is here. Okay. They are in place. All right. B. A light wave from a laser has a wavelength of 460 nanometer in vacuum. Calculate the period of the wave. I'm pretty sure tomorrow you'll be writing this equation or this equation, lambda over T. Okay. But when using this equation, remember, when it comes to light, the speed is also 3 times 10 to the power of 8, given in the question paper. So we have 460 nano is negative 9 divided by T. So you can find your period. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. I got 1.53 times 10 to the power negative 15. Okay. The period? Lambda over T. Yep. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you will be using this equation in some way, shape, or form because there are not that many equations in waves. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, moving on to the next part. The light from the laser is incident. Why is this three marks? Now I'm looking at it. Okay, the three marks are here. You write equation, you get one mark. It's Christmas time now, okay? Substitute value, get one mark. Answer is one mark. All right, part C. The light from the laser is incident normally on a diffraction grating. Describe the diffraction of light wave in diffraction grating. So diffraction and diffraction grating has something similar. Just now we say wave passes a gap. So here the wave will pass through, but not just one slit, many slits or several slits and straight into remember this thing that i drew here uh, cambridge like to call this a geometric shadow i guess maybe the dark part here is a geometric shadow okay so yeah spreading into a geometric shadow all right so D, this one is given a different scenario. So whenever it comes to uh, setting questions, right, Cambridge will test you three levels. You will definitely have level two. You may or may not have level one and three. Okay. So think about it as a build your own subway sandwich. Lah. All right. Level one is always general definition or explanation. Like for example, explain what is meant by diffraction, explain what is wavelength. Okay. Level two involves calculation or graph. And or don't know. They will present to you an information. The case may be presented to you in the format of a graph. It could be presented to you in the format of a paragraph. I don't know. I can't tell the future. So you know what is level three? Changes. Either changes to calculation or changes to graph. I.e. you will write something. They always say state and explain. Uh, favorite terms. So you will definitely have level two in paper two. You are, we either want it to set an easy or a simple enough question and we only do define this, explain that, and then we jump to level two. Like this question, Ex describe, define, describe. Okay, these are all pretty standard stuff. Can memorize, can find in textbook, can find in theory. Level two is general calculation, but changes that they can make, I don't know what they can change. Huh? Many things can be changed over time, right? Okay, so just think about where are your weak spots if you have any, and you can think about finding questions that answer or respond to them. Okay, let's continue the question. A diffraction grating is used with different wavelengths of visible light. Sure. Angle theta of the fourth order maximum from the zero order central maximum is measured for each wavelength. Okay, so now in this situation, we have a few things happening at the same time. Number one, I am changing the, the wavelength. I change wavelength. So use equation first, help us brain the scenario. At least for me, I write equation. D sine theta is n lambda. It says here that we use the fourth order. So my n is equal to four. And then I change lambda. So whenever you do an experiment, you have a manipulated or a independent variable, which is lambda. Lambda is here. And then you have a dependent variable, which is a responding variable, depending on which country you come from. But Cambridge uses uh, dependent. This one is your variable. You switch different color light or different wavelength light, you will get different angle for the fourth order. Are we using the same diffraction grating? Yes. It says here a diffraction grating. So this one is constant. Let me rearrange the equation. Sine theta is on the y-axis. So whatever that's on the y-axis, when you see uh, there are videos teaching you how to linearize graph, but the shortcut here is you see this on y-axis, you make this the subject of your equation. Time to do some algebra. So I will rearrange this. And now this one will look like sine theta is equal to 4 lambda over d. 
wait a second. I can put a bracket here. I put lambda. And I can compare with the general equation of a straight line. Y is equal to mx. Oh, teacher, y axis is sine theta. Correct. Y axis is indeed sine theta. X axis is lambda. Correct. So you genius, think to yourself, what is gradient forward? So the gradient of the graph G is equal to 4 over D. Don't worry. you got equation. You know what it means. You can modify it. Okay? All right. Determine an expression in terms of G for the distance D between the two adjacent slits. So we're looking for D. So D is equal to 4 over G. But of course, you're not going to write just this for your equation, right? So we will start from the top law. Always write the equation first. Announce your intent. Every story must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Introduce your character. N lambda or D sine theta is equal to N lambda. Rearrange and substitute. Basically, I'm just repeating what I did just now. Okay? So hence, D over 4 is equal to G. D is equal to 4 over G. Right? So the marks here will be if you write this equation, you get one mark. And if you substitute 4 and include all the algebra, you get the second mark. So this one is 4 divided by G. The expression. Okay? We don't know what your variant is. All right, anyway, in figure 4.1, sketch a graph to show the result that would be obtained for second order maxima. Okay, now we have n is equal to 2. For the friend who asked this question, I think they only want this part. <laughs> n equal to 2. So your n equal to 2, it means your gradient that was previously 4 over d now becomes 2 over d. Right? Because the n was 4, now the n... Is 2. Can okay. you replace 4 with 2? So the gradient is half. First thing I know here, gradient is half. But you, you hold on first. Huh? Just because the gradient is half, and you know what? I'm going to steal the graph again. Give me a sec. Just because the gradient is half doesn't mean that you know where to draw the line. Okay? Because If we look at this graph, it seems to, I mean, you want to half the gradient? Yeah, half the gradient. You want to draw it less steep, more steep. How would you draw? And where would you draw the line? Can you just draw, simply draw anywhere? Can you just simply show your line anywhere you want? Cannot be right. Okay. So then we need to basically look at relook at the equation again. This is a little bit a, a bit more work for two marks, right? But it's okay. Never mind. Not all marks are created equal. Okay. So I am going to think about the perspective of lambda. So we have two numbers here, 400 and 700. Okay. So when, now I think about sine theta. Okay. I don't know what this value is. La. I'm just going to call this, I'll just call this 10 and 20. La. Can, my, my, my maths teacher brain don't allow. 0 0.10 and 0 0.20. Okay. So right now, sine theta is equal to 2 lambda over d. This line, this, this, this line is for d sine theta is equal to 4 lambda over d. Oh, sorry, sine theta is 4 lambda over d. 
So if it's four lambda over D and four lambda over D is six boxes, six boxes or 0 0.06 if you want. I count boxes now, okay. Then where will two lambda over D be? Wouldn't it be three boxes? So wouldn't it be somewhere here? Make sense? This is for 400 nanometer. 400 nanometer. <coughs> Repeat again for 700 nanometer. Sine theta is equal to 2 lambda over D, but the original line, sine theta is equal to 4 lambda over D. And this 4 lambda over D is 10 boxes. So this one must be 5 boxes. Okay? So you just divide this whole thing by half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And then with a confident hand, and please bring a ruler tomorrow. You draw a straight line like that. Long. Okay? And it is half the gradient. Can? So don't worry too much about copying. I will upload a PDF later for you in the chat when this whole thing is over. But when this comes out, and there were a few times that this came out before, you should think about the perspective of drawing out like considering, okay, 400 nanometer, n equal to 4 is 6 boxes. So n equal to 2 will be half of the 6 boxes. Okay. Let's set to whole. Okay, if you would like something similar to this, Uh, suggestion for question to try will be May, June 17, paper 2, 3, question 5. Go find wherever you normally find your past years. Very similar to this one. Okay, next, we're on to 2. Okay, if you're asking me questions in the chat, there's a lot of chatter going on. So I'm only looking at the Padlet, but try not to spam it. If not, my attention will be all over the place. That'll be good. Okay, let's look at variant four two. Sorry, not four two, two two. Many papers. Okay, suggested that you try this one. Okay, this question will address both intensity and phase difference at the same time. Okay. And if Orion 2, 3 is similar, then I will just stop and move on. All right. Progressive waste, statewide is meant by period. You see a trend here. They will always